Hello, my name is Fraser Simons. Today I'm going to be talking about a Giller Prize book, The Son of the House, a short listed book by Chiluchi Onyaman Luki Onyuabia. I hope I pronounced that at least somewhat correctly. Anyway, look at that cover again. Stunning. This book has a really interesting plot hook. Two Nigerian women who are a little bit older in their 70s are taken hostage by a ostensibly like a terrorist group. We don't really know primarily what their affiliations are, but we know through the fiction eventually that uh, in the area that they're traversing, it's like a bad area of town and more and more people have started being taken and ransomed and it's like, I wouldn't say 50-50, but the, the odds aren't great, basically, as to what will happen. Sometimes people have a positive outcome, and it's just very professional. They get exchanged for the money, and it's over. Um, other times, if they can't afford it, the people do wind up dead. Or sometimes they are paid, and there's like an accident or whatever, where the person has been being held for so long that they end up succumbing to, like, thirst or hunger or the elements or whatever, wherever they were placed. One guy is found in the trunk of a car dead, I think, because the people took too long to pay. And then by the time they did and were told where the location was, the person was dead. So there's a little bit of um, immediate tension placed in there. Um, they're being held in a cellar, if I remember correctly and to pass the time and probably to get their minds off of what is happening to them, they end up telling each other the story of their lives, which is more or less coming of age story where uh, the part one is them being taken, part two is their stories up until a certain point. Um, usually, I think it's until like mid twenties to thirties or something like that. So it ends up being like a short chapter two pretty long chapters uh, as it alternates their viewpoints and then it starts being broken up by shorter and shorter chapters as we get um, up to the present day situation again and learn what actually happens to them. I like structures like this because we're leading up to a tension point. It does somewhat get deflated I suppose because there's a lot of time in 200 and 80 pages I want to say it's probably like 260 pages leading up to the, the yeah about the last 20 pages or so is present day and exactly what happens to them so the tension does get deflated a bit just because you do kind of just as in they are trying to explain to each other their life story to get their mind off of their situation the reader I think um, experiences that as well because they're consuming the life story in a lot more at least ostensibly granular detail than what they are telling each other. Um, it takes place in a Nigerian small town um, and then moves to a larger-ish city in Nigeria. Uh, there's a lot of good description around food and basically the themes woven throughout is that uh, one of resilience, having to face patriarchal type situations that are dehumanizing, demeaning, and uh, just kind of horrific. We know, of course, that they're going to surmount all of these obstacles in some way because they're, they're here, they're, they're living, and they're um, doing well enough that they are being ransomed, right? So they obviously have some money or some valuables or something. Uh, we know that they don't just take anybody, they target specific individuals. The life stories are somewhat um, quintessential, I would say, of reading similar type fiction, especially can lit, that target immigrant stories from abroad. Um, it does deviate, obviously, somewhat in specific details, but the overarching stuff that is happening you probably will see coming and find quite predictable but it's still 
a very interesting and sometimes very moving story. It's very well told, very well written, I think. The pros are specifically not exactly what I look for, um, especially when it's set abroad. What I typically want from the pros is to be uh, rather evocative of the actual setting because I'm not familiar with Nigeria or anywhere really <laughs> abroad. If it's not uh, Western culture, America, Canada type situation, I probably don't know what it is like. And so I, I like fiction that roots itself in time and place and gives me details like architecture, clothing, colors, uh, different things like that, which this story is not particularly interested in doing, uh, which is fine. It's just a specific taste that I have that just doesn't jive with sometimes uh, how people write, especially if they're into sort of like Hemingway-esque type stuff. I would say typically if the sentence structures are like that, they generally aren't interested in description. A small gripe that I have with it as well is that uh, it sort of seems like they are about to tell each other their life stories and then the life story chapters as it goes is a first person narrative, but it is not uh, diegetic in that it's being it. What they say is not what they are specifically telling one another, which feels strange and a missed opportunity for constructing a narrative that was like that. It was one of the main pulls of why I picked it up in the uh, synopsis of the book. But um, it is also pretty typical, I think, that chapters being told like this are reframed in that manner. It just felt like... It just feels very strange sometimes when they get into very granular sometimes strange sentence constructions because it's specifically trying to cater to the to the reader instead of it being something that would actually be taking place inside the fiction which would be more interesting to me um it also sort of undermines the structure of the book for me because why have it even structured like that if it's constantly being undermined, for instance, later on in the book, we get to a point where um, it's present day, but then one of the characters is getting to the point that we know of the retelling of her story as she is verbalizing it to the other person. And so we're kind of constantly retreading this ground. Are we the narrator somehow gaining an omniscient but first-person point of view of these people's lives in the past? Or if so, then why are we suddenly in the present and learning about things that we've already learned four chapters back and seeing the reaction of the person in the future rather than it being, you know, divided up so that if it were diegetic, we could get the reactions of the other person uh, right away which I think would be, as I said, more interesting and maybe validate the structure a little bit more for me. Um, so all in all, I thought this was like a, a very interesting book, but it didn't, it wasn't, the author isn't interested in the same things that I was, so it was hard to uh, get invested in it. Um, the characters were believable. Like I said, this, the actual chosen uh, prose and the way it was executed was well written and well done, I thought. It just wasn't specifically for me, so I gave it two stars, especially with the uh, structure being undermined throughout. That was a gripe that sort of uh, needled me <laughs> into the end, and because it kept happening at the end of the book, it's sort of my last memory of, or the most pronounced memory I have of the book. The impression that it left was why is it doing this and is it working and for me the answer is no but it was still worth uh, reading and consuming i might have had unreasonable expectations for the book too because it was shortlisted and i have uh, very strong feelings about the listening by jordan Tannehill. i really loved it i had big reactions from canada reads this year so i was kind of hoping for all of the books to be in that kind of group 
um, but I didn't get it. So who knows, maybe a whole bunch of perfect storm factors here made it so that I didn't really like it. If you read Son of the House, let me know what you thought of it. Did you like it? Did you enjoy it? Did the structure work for you? Did you like the prose? Did you like the voice? What did you make of it? Let me know what you thought about it in the comments and I will be glad to have a chat with you. See you later. Bye.